Tonight, migrating through a civil war. We're not migrants, we are prisoners. Amazon's prime tax treatment. And... President Trump is still fighting with California to deploy members of the National Guard to combat illegal immigration. California is the only state bordering Mexico that has a Democratic governor, Jerry Brown, and Trump dissed him on Twitter this morning over, quote, his very porous border. But Brown said he and Trump are close to a deal, while also making it clear he doesn't agree with the president's position on immigration. This is highly political, highly political. I'm trying to, to not uh, uh, feed the, the fires of, of uh, prejudice and fear, uh, but enforce the law, uh, deal with this anomaly of millions of people uh, here that are not uh, lawful, that don't have documentation, and somehow work it through. Russia's facing disciplinary action from FIFA over charges of fan racism. A spokesperson for the organization confirmed that it started proceedings against the Russian football union, just ahead of the World Cup finals that are set to kick off in Russia in June. During a match last month, fans in St. Petersburg reportedly shouted monkey chants at black players on the French team. Fan behavior in St. Petersburg also prompted two other racism cases this season. RFU said the people responsible for the racist acts should be punished. We Neil Gorsuch, Trump's pick for the Supreme Court, sided with liberal justices today in a decision that could make it harder for Trump to deport people. In the case Sessions v. DeMaia, the court ruled 5-4 to four that part of a federal immigration law is unconstitutionally vague. A section that says immigrants convicted of a, quote, crime of violence should be deported. In his opinion, Gorsuch said that vague laws can open the door for authorities to exercise arbitrary power and for courts to make up laws as they go along. The European Court of Justice ruled today that Poland broke the law by excessively logging in a forest that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Bioa Vieja Forest is one of Europe's oldest, and it's home to the continent's largest herd of nearly extinct bison. Vice News spent time with environmental activists last year who were trying to stop the government from what they said was doing damage to a delicate habitat. Poland argued the logging was necessary to fight a beetle infestation, but the court rejected its claim. The Polish government says it will accept the decision and has already stopped logging. Yemen's civil war has now entered its fourth year, leaving the country's citizens stuck in the middle of a proxy battle between the Saudi-led international coalition and Iran-backed rebels. It's led to the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. But that hasn't stopped one group of people from trying to get in. Migrants from the Horn of Africa. In 2017 alone, more than 87,000 came to Yemen. Yemen is quite a dangerous country. There's a civil war been going on here for the last few years. Does that concern you guys at all? But things must be pretty bad in Ethiopia for you to come here to Yemen. How do you know where to go? Is it very far? <laughs> Yemen's nearly 1,200-mile coastline is difficult to police, making it relatively easy for boats to arrive. For most of the migrants traveling here, their goal is to find work in wealthier Gulf states like Saudi Arabia. Going through Yemen is far cheaper than cutting across the Mediterranean to Europe. But once crossing the Gulf of Aden, many arrive in one of Yemen's most dangerous provinces, Shabwa an Al-Qaeda stronghold and a migrant smuggling hub. How have the Yemenis treated you? Yemeni, 
يقول لي سعادك شوية تبغى نسعادك يقول بدي سعادة يخش في الطريق الثاني وبعدين يخش يا رب يا عمل يقول جيب له حول قرش ما عندنا قرش يقول جيب حول القرش من فين نحول ما عندنا Do you think everyone makes it over to Saudi? Allah alam. Mungkin hasna fi fi mot, mungkin fi mot, mungkin fi aish fi. Allah alam. Yemeni security forces patrol the roads, detaining and deporting any migrants they find. We're just in the outskirts of Aden with these guys who are scouring the roads looking for illegal migrants. They say they're doing this on a daily basis. They're looking to pick up migrants and put them in this truck and take them to one of their detention centers. It didn't take this patrol long to find what they were looking for. These Ethiopians told us they'd been walking for three days. They surrendered immediately and were taken to the city's detention facility. The coalition-backed Interior Ministry operates the center, and this man, Khaled Alwani, runs it. Because there's no centralized authority to process asylum claims and the country's government is barely functioning, Awani has free reign to do as he pleases. He gave us rare access to the camp, but was keen to restrict what we could film. Wow. This is a lot of people. We can't go inside? Why? This looks insanely huge. How many people do you have crammed inside there? كله كله في المكان هذا يمكن في حدود ال 700. The camp was overcrowded and had no sanitation. Only the Eritreans were allowed outside their shed during the day because Alwani considered them less of a flight risk. The others were simply trapped inside. يعني زي ما هذا الجو ذا يعني ما عاد يحتاج هذا يعتبر مصيف. لو فكيت لهم الان قلت لهم خلاص يلا تمشوا. Awani claimed he would return these migrants to Djibouti, where many of them set sail from. He said that in order to solve the migration problem, he works alongside the smugglers who illegally brought them to Yemen in the first place. He introduced us to one who happened to be at the detention center while we were there. Awani kept a close eye on us throughout our interview. How many migrants are you bringing over? How many migrants are you bringing over? 20, 50. 50. That's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> How much money do you make from transporting migrants over here to Yemen? How often are you bringing them over? How much does the government pay you to do this? To detain the migrants and then to transport them back to Djibouti? العمل هو وطني أكثر ما هو موضوع يعني ربح وما ربح لكن برضه ما أقدر أقول لكم إنه والله إنه نخسر كذا. We asked again if we could film inside the shed, but Alwani refused. إحنا نقوم بعادتهم عبر البحر والبحر خطير فإذا صار فيهم شيء هذول ما في شيء شيء يثبت لكن كاميراتكم بتثبت إن هذول كانوا موجودين في المكان هذا. So you're saying that you don't want us to film inside because you don't want it to come back to you that these guys might die? Aye. Is that because that's happened before? حصل يعني في قبل أسبوعين يعني أنا وصلتهم لما جبوتي ورجعوا في جلبة ثانية وانقلبت فيهم وماتوا. After Alwani admitted that migrants leaving from his camp and who were under his care had drowned and died. We tracked down former detainees of the center. They were on the boat when it capsized. How many people did you watch drown? At least 50 men, women and children drowned and died in this incident. Are there any human rights abuses that take place in here? Well, we're all 
الاكل نجيب لهم والعلاج نجيب لهم والملابس نجيب لهم لكن نقوم نقول لهم يعني ضرب او شيء لا لا ما يسمح لنا صلاه الضمير Even though Alwani and his guards were monitoring our movements, Vice News managed to speak to some of the migrants inside the camp. It's fine. It's not comfortable. Look what people do here. They torture us every day. People, they are entering with the guns and torture us every day, every time. Do they beat people? Without reason. Until they are bleeding. And so we are sent, you know, that is, we sell. People sell here. When you say sell here, what do you mean? Even traffic. They told us we're not migrants. We are prisoners. A major new report released by Human Rights Watch today corroborates our findings. They also accuse the Yemeni government of overseeing the rape, torture and execution of African migrants and asylum seekers in the detention facility we visited. We sat down with the Interior Minister, Ahmad al-Misri, to ask him about the spiraling migrant crisis that he's supposed to be managing. Mr. Khalid Alwani runs a detention camp here in Aden. Tell me about his relationship with your government. Hmm. So you're his boss? Yes, of And he goes by your orders? Yes, of course, he goes by my What does that mean? I get the impression he's not completely under your control. There are allegations of serious human rights abuses going on there, including beatings, including extortions for money, including rape, including people being sent back illegally to countries that they're not from. And I've seen with my own eyes terrible prison-like conditions. ولا عندي علم بمسألة انتهاكات حقوق إنسان ولا اغتصاب تمام يعني هذا الكلام كله أنا سمعته الآن فقط منا. Do you think that Mr. Alwani is doing a good job when it comes to handling this migration crisis? لا سيء. Then why are you allowing him to do this job? I mean you're his boss. لو أقول سيء بكل ما تعمل كلمة معنا ما هذه قناعاتنا نحن في الوزارة ما أريد أنا أنا بإمكاني اتخذ قرار الآن فورا وأبدله. Just days after our interview took place, the Interior Minister sacked Alwani. He told us that more than 50 military vehicles came to forcibly remove him from the detention center. He denied any wrongdoing. The Interior Ministry have said they're planning to close the center we filmed at and open a new facility, this time in Razalara, yet another renowned smuggling hub on the outskirts of Aden. Around 90 migrants currently remain at the camp, not knowing where they'll be sent next. It's tax day today. And in a feat of spectacularly bad timing, the IRS's payment page went offline adding new misery to an annual deadline that's already a headache for most Americans. This afternoon, the IRS announced it would give people another day to file. For his part, President Trump has already filed for a six-month extension because, according to the White House, his return is so complex. But tax day isn't such an ordeal for most American corporations, especially one company that's become the president's least favorite corporate citizen. Over the past couple of weeks, President Trump has blasted Amazon on Twitter for supposedly ripping off the post office, for supposedly putting many thousands of retailers out of business, and for dodging state and local taxes. Most of these points by the president are either overblown or just plain inaccurate. In fact, Trump seems to be focusing on just about everything aside from an Amazon practice that actually is kind of sketchy, paying almost nothing in federal income taxes. In 2017, Amazon earned $5.6 billion in profits in the U.S. and probably paid less in federal income taxes than you did because Amazon paid exactly $0. It actually expects to get more than $100 million back from the government. Of course, all companies try to get their tax bills down, but Matthew Gardner at the Institute on Taxation and Public Policy says Amazon is unusually good at it. We did a report that found over an eight-year period if you look at all the Fortune 500 companies that were profitable, those companies paid an average federal tax rate of 21%. Over the past five years, 
Amazon paid an effective federal income tax rate of 11.4%. So when you see zero in 2017, that's certainly more aggressive than they have been, but it's not at all out of character for the company over a long period of time. Amazon isn't doing anything illegal. As its annual financial statements show, it's just taking advantage of some lucrative tax breaks. Last year, for instance, Amazon got its taxes down to nothing, largely thanks to deduction for the stock options it gives its executives. It also got a credit for its foreign taxes and deductions for depreciation on some of its property. But Gartner says Amazon's ability to sidestep taxes like this is a big problem. And not just because the government is losing out on hundreds of millions of dollars each year. When you see Amazon playing the tax system like a piano in this way, earning billions of dollars and not paying any income taxes on it, that reinforces the public's distrust of government and of our tax system. The push for corporate income tax cuts over the last year has been built on one big lie. We right now tax our businesses at the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world. And that what big is lie is that our corporate taxes are among the highest in the world. Our corporate taxes as a share of corporate profits are actually not that high at all. Who knows if Trump is aware how little Amazon pays in federal income tax. But even if he was, he might not want to talk about it. Trump's new tax plan effectively rewards companies for deferring tax payments by applying the new lower 21% corporate rate instead of the old 35% one when they finally pay up. And Amazon says that's going to save them almost $800 million. Businesses in Florida and Georgia both rely on the same river basin. But the neighboring states disagree on how much of the river's water can get taken out of the river. It's a battle that pits city dwellers in Atlanta against rural farmers in southern Georgia, against Gulf Coast fishermen whose catch is dwindling along with the river's flow. The fight's been going on for years. But in 2013, Florida Governor Rick Scott took it a step further. He announced plans to sue Georgia directly in the Supreme Court. Uh, they've kept our water. It's been going on for decades. Uh, Florida's going to file suit to make sure this stops. This summer, the court is on track to decide once and for all the fair way to divvy up the river. I watch you call working at the bottom when you move your tongue like that. Yeah. Hold them up. Yeah. Me and my dad work really good together. I'm left-handed and he's right-handed. I work on the, the left-hand side of the boat and he works on the right-hand side of the boat as far as tonguing. Shannon Hartsfield has been fishing for oysters since he was 12 years old. His father, Abe, has been an oysterman in Florida's Apalachicola Bay since the 1960s. But over the last few decades, the number of oysters, crabs, and shrimp in the bay has fallen sharply. And that's because less fresh water from the Apalachicola Chattahoochee Flint River Basin, or the ACF, is flowing into the bay. We never had sea urchins in our oyster bars before. This fresh water comes, it pushes all these predators away. And right now, the salinity has changed drastically. How many people left are making a full-time living as an oysterman? Uh, you can count the boats. I mean, literally, you can count the boats. Uh, on prettier days, I've seen one or two boats more. A decade ago, Shannon says there were as many as 500 oystermen on the water. Their problems start over 300 miles away, at the head of the ACF Basin in northern Georgia. Its rivers flow south past Atlanta, down along Georgia's border with Alabama and Florida, before ending in the Apalachicola Bay. Down here, at the bottom of the basin, water withdrawals are only around 30 million gallons per day. Florida contends that Georgia is taking more than its fair share of water in the basin, which warrants a cap on Georgia's use. Georgia, for its part, disputes that a cap will offer Florida any relief. 
That's because any redistribution of the water would have to be done by the Army Corps of Engineers, a federal agency that controls five dams in the ACF basin. Even after the Supreme Court makes a decision, the Corps are the ones to turn the tap on and off for Florida. On the face of it, Florida seems to have a case. In the upper parts of the basin, water withdrawals are around 650 million gallons per day, more than half of which is used by Metro Atlanta. But Catherine Zitch, the water planner for the Atlanta Regional Commission, doesn't think it's fair to blame the city. So we're returning 70% of what we're withdrawing, um, which is all about innovation, investment, and infrastructure. You know, when you look at the river, um, you just think, hey, there's a river just like any other river, and clearly we as Atlantans are just bringing our buckets out here and taking it back to our homes. But in reality, this is a highly managed system. Do you think that Georgia's water use is harming Florida? I think the number one problem we have in this basin is lack of rainfall. And when there is a lack of rainfall, we all have a role to play in lowering that water demand. But when it's not raining, uh, we are all in a drop condition. Further downstream, in southwestern Georgia's farmland, the problem continues. Water withdrawals down here are more than 900 million gallons per day, 60% of which is used for agriculture. But in 2010, the legislature put a moratorium on new irrigation permits. For farmers like Murray Campbell, it felt like the state was blaming them. We are a large user. We grow a lot of sweet corn down here now, and we put it on a truck and we ship it to the Northeast, and you all go to a supermarket up there and you buy it. Who utilizes that water? We're, we're doing something that needs to be done. Now, we need to do it wise. Murray is sympathetic to the oystermen in Florida, but he thinks their expectation of restoring water to the bay is unrealistic. You'd have to take out nearly all of the irrigation that we have down here now. So you're saying all farming would have cease to exist? It shouldn't and it won't. And you don't just pick one over the other and say, this use is more important than this use. Uh, but our economy down here is based off this irrigated land. On average, about 1.6 billion gallons of water is withdrawn from the ACF each day. But population growth, drought, and climate change continue to put pressure on the shared system. Back in Apalachicola, Shannon is waiting. The case was argued in January, and a decision is expected by June. If the Supreme Court sides with Georgia in this case, what will you do? I'll probably have to move from here. And I'm not seeing a future in the Bay, and so I'm gonna have to look elsewhere. I don't see here anything that I can make a living. Jay Vance, who's dubbed himself J-Bot, has been touring and performing with different bands for over 20 years. But he's built most of his bandmates. She plays faster than your stupid drummer. He started out by playing with human bandmates, but it didn't work out. I can't get along with people, so it's a lot easier to just build robots to play with. To have to like wait for a bassist to like tune his bass and stuff, or to like, <clears throat> someone's playing and they just can't get that riff, and I'm like, I could program a robot to do your riff, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He's preparing to get one of his That's bands, the there. Teddy Bear Orchestra, back together for the first time in 11 years. The group is made of salvaged parts, held together with levers and pulleys. Uh, where's the input? Oh, right. And the whole thing is powered by pneumatic air pressure. The air cylinder just comes down and press it, and then the elastic pulls it back up. He uses a sequencer and a MIDI keyboard to choreograph and write the music. A robot can play things that a person maybe wouldn't, you know, because they got all these fingers. You can do all these weird things. And go. The music isn't for everyone. It's an original sound. It's nice to have sounds that don't sound like everybody else. Each robot is different for what controls what. I mean, there's different channels, there's different uh, note numbers that control different things, so I just have to go and, you know, I have to put in the information to make each robot play. 
with with a keyboard, it's all set up so I could you know control motions left and right, up and down. The last time Teddy Bear Orchestra actually played a gig, that was just these two bears. Now, you know, I'm in the band, the horns are in the band, Whitey's in the band, so it's never been seen, like, live. It's not AI, but it still seems like a lot of work to avoid playing with other humans. This is the worst. Setting up and breaking down with, with any band, you're putting yourself out there, but as a solo thing and as a first show out, it's like, man, that's pressure. I, I originally saw them as a duo, very excited to see the band's growth yeah. and development. Live performances are the one time when J-Bot enjoys human attention. Yeah. To answer your question, who is ready to rock and roll? I am ready to rock and roll. I was blessed with having a totally obsessive, compulsive, you know, brain that just keeps going a lot. And so I just take the ideas that I have and I put them into material things and I make things work. Bring it on home. Yeah. That's Vice News Tonight for Tuesday, April 17th.